Hey, what's going on, Garden Railroaders? Maui Mike here, and uh, this is Rock and Roll Real Grand number seven. So what we're going to be doing here today is uh, I'm going to be showing you on how to assemble one of Colorado Model Structures uh, buildings, and it's the uh, Cascade Summit Section House. And uh, so basically, when you get the kit, what you're going to get is you're going to get a set of instructions. You're going to get the kit in a plastic bag like this. First thing you want to do is uh, take out all the parts and then wash them in some like uh, detergent, some uh, like Dove or something like that. Get all oil off of the product, and uh, so you want to clean that up real good, dry it real good, let it dry, okay? And then what you want to do is uh, start cleaning the parts. Some parts are going to have not a whole lot of flash on them. Some are going to have uh, a little bit more. So usually what I like to do is uh, take the uh, start on the sides first and usually what I'll do is I'll take an X-Acto knife and I'll sc sc scrape across the top and the bottom making the sides nice and flush and you get off the uh, excess uh, pieces, all the excess uh, flash that you don't want on there. So you can go ahead and uh, do that all the way around the uh, all around the four sides, and then uh, I like to take usually where the big uh, nubs are at. I usually like to take a sand sandpaper on a on a uh, tool here, sanding tool, and take it and just go ahead and, and sand it. Sand it flush, kind of just get the edges real real smooth like that. Okay. Do that all the way around, and then I like to take the X-Acto knife and go inside the windows and just uh, scratch off any uh, excess that might be in there. Go ahead and do the uh, outside first, and then go ahead and turn it around on the inside and then just hit the inside a little bit. Okay? And let's see how that's done. Now, you, what you might want to do is... Uh, you uh, railroaders that have been in the uh, business for a long time, hey, don't think that you can't learn anything here. I mean, I'm still learning myself, so, and I've been doing this 50 some years. So, anyway, uh, you might want to watch because, hey, you might get some hints that you're uh, not used to doing and would help you speed up the process of making these buildings. And uh, so, anyway, you can always learn uh, new uh, techniques. So, uh, Hopefully I've got a few here that you can uh, you can learn from. So anyway, that's what I do with the uh, sides. I do the same thing for the roof, and I do the uh, same thing for the uh, doors and windows. And uh, doors and windows, I just take a uh, I just take a rail nipper and uh, cut it off from all the screws and stuff. Okay. So then, as you can see, what I've done here is. When I do these buildings, I like to get the corners as, probably as close as you can get them. Well, here's what I do. I take, I go down to Lowe's or something, buy myself a piece of this uh, shelving with uh, melamine on it. And then I just take some scrap lumber and I take the size of the building and I go ahead and uh, lay it out. I put some wax paper over the top of this and then I've got some, uh, uh, just lay out the side of the building on there. And I've got some uh, weights that I put on the inside here to keep it nice and straight and flush. And then uh, <clears throat> what I'll do is go ahead and take a piece of string, put a slip knot in it, and uh, slip knot it. And then you can get the tight, draw the tight in, the top in real nice and tight. And then you just go ahead and, uh, and cinch it down in the corner, and then just tape tape off the string. Okay, so that gets your building nice and uh, uh, level and all plumb. And check with the corners and make sure they're okay. They're they're uh, fine. Um, okay, then what I usually do is go ahead and uh, take a little uh, this Tamiya. It's uh, extra thin uh, cement, and then I'll dip a brush in here, and then I usually uh, put these uh, weights far enough away to where they're not in the way of the corner. I'll just go ahead and. Brush it in there real good. And I usually let that uh, sit up for a couple minutes, and then what I'll do is go ahead and uh, apply a second coat. 
and then usually while that's drying, what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get my doors and windows all ready. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention before I uh, clamp all this together and everything, well, after I've taken off all the flash from the outside, I take a real stiff wire brush. And I do this on the roof and on the sides also. I'll set this down on flat and I'll just run this brush over it real good. Takes up all the little, little bitty flashings that I didn't get off. Plus what it does, it uh, roughens up the sides so the paint sticks better. And uh, also gives it some extra grooving in there to make it look like uh, old weathered wood. So, uh, and if you wanted to paint the inside of the building, uh, you could also hit the inside. Take takes that real uh, uh, slick finish off of it and makes it nice and rough for the paint to stick. So some of you, if you want to uh, do an interior or whatever, you might want to paint the back sides black before you do the front sides. So basically I just, because uh, I don't put glazing in mine because I like the... Okay, now that we've got all four sides glued, what I like to do is uh, take some uh, strips of lumber here and just cut them a little bit shorter than the uh, height of the walls. And I'll take a little uh, zappa goo here, and I'll put this on here. Put that one on there. And then I'll just go ahead and set this on there. Got all the uh, pieces roughed up here. I went out and picked up some uh, colors that I uh, want to paint the uh, roof and the uh, windows. Uh, for the roof, I picked a uh, Krylon. Camouflage is kind of a light beige. Um, I'll be showing you how to highlight this roof so it really pops out later on. And then for the uh, windows, I picked a Valspar primer that I buy at Lowe's. Uh, this has to be like a uh, rust primer. So I'm going to paint the windows with this color. I'm going to add a few highlights with black with the spray. And uh, anyway, I'll show you how that's done. So anyway, I'll go ahead and shoot all the doors and windows. Which was a nice even spray. And uh, I use this Dow Spar, it works pretty good. I like to use Krylon. Um, basically, the only place I can basically get it now is at uh, Pet Boys, and I get the uh, Valve Spar at uh, Lowe's. And this stuff is, I don't know, it's about three bucks a can, four bucks a can. It's, it's fairly reasonable. So, anyways, we're doing some nice even coats. I want to put it on real heavy. And it's pretty hot out here today, so it's going to dry pretty quick. Okay, so that's for the doors and windows. And here's for the roof. Now also, we've got a brick fireplace also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those aside for right now. Paint just the, uh, just the roof. What I want to do is just... In a minute. Get the edges in real light. Okay, now the sides are dry. I'm going to go ahead and spray the outside of the building. And I'm going to use a uh, dark olive for this. I've already sprayed the front so you can uh, get an idea what it's going to look like. Here. Now, some people prefer to go ahead and uh, you know, mask off the uh, batten boards and paint those a different color rather than the building. So you can go ahead and do that. Uh, it's a lot of masking off. Um, but like I said, myself, I like old style buildings and I like them looking real old. So anyway, we're just gonna add a little, little bit of a gray touch to the bottom of the building. What I do is start out real low and work my way up so I don't hit it too much. Uh -huh. 